Welcome to Impact the World, the show for and about creatives, change makers, and entrepreneurs. This is a conversation episode where a special guest shares with me what they are creating and the behind the scenes journey of their experience. Welcome to Impact the World, and today's episode is all about books and being an author and the books that change our lives. We have two very special guests today. It's Christine Carlson and Deborah Evans. You may know Christine from the 25 million selling Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, which became a publishing pheno phenomenon about 20 years ago. And Deborah Evans will be familiar to those of you who know me in my work because she is the editor of my book, Energy Speaks. And over the past 20, 30 years, Deborah has edited many books, working alongside many well-known authors in the transformational field. But she began as a bookstore manager, a book buyer, and she also used to run the Whole Life Expo wellness events. So Deb and Christine have a very unique collaboration and perspective. And when they met several years ago, they decided to come together and bring their expertise and their creativity and to help people midwife their own books. They have something called the 10 week book incubator program. They do a monthly writer's boot camp. So it was a real pleasure to get to speak to them both today. If you enjoy the show, please, as usual, subscribe at Apple podcasts or leave a rating or a review because that really supports us. And in the meantime, please enjoy Chris and Deborah and our conversation about the books that change lives. Deborah and Chris, thank you so much for being here. We have been talking about this conversation for a while, and I'm not just excited to have the conversation with you two, but I'm, I'm just excited about what you're doing and this presence that you're holding in the world for all of the want to be authors, which we all know being in this field for a long time, there are many, many people who feel they have a book in them. So kudos for the Book Doulas program and, and everything you're doing to help authors bring their work into the world. Oh, thank you, Lee. Yeah, thank you so much. You've been a big part of helping us to launch what we're doing. So the, the thanks is very deep. Well, it's funny because Chris, you and I are fairly new to each other. Um, we got introduced to each other through Deb, but Deb, even though you and I really only met, what, six years ago, you are like one of the loves of my life. So, and I think you have that effect on everybody. And 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 then when when you and Chris met and you told me about the, the great connection you had and um, what you were doing together and the friendship that you were forming, I, I was really happy for both of you and then really happy to see what you did with it because originally you two came together to work on Chris's next book, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's that's right. Chris's uh, most recent book is called From Heartbreak to Wholeness. And um, it's funny because it, it for us, our connection started at an eight day workshop. And as we have told the story to some of, of our participants in our workshops, we both kind of went kicking and screaming into this eight days. Um, <laughs> a workshop called Why Have You Come to Earth led by you know, three of our most beloved friends, Rich Nivon and Justin. Mm -hmm. And um, eight days is a big commitment. <laughs> and by the end of the workshop, we both looked at each other and said, you know, we came here to meet each other. And so that was kind of the beginning for us. And it just so happened that, and I'll let Chris say more about this, but she had just gotten a contract with her publishing company and was just getting kind of geared up for, okay, it's time to finish this book. And so as Grace would have it, I got to be the editor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Chris. It was, um, it was such a funny moment because in this um, program, we had to do a presentation of our, what we were going to be doing as our project. And, and so I decided, well, I'm, I'm going to be writing a book this year. So that's going to be my project, why I've come to the earth. And, and, um, and when the questions came, Deb didn't know anything about me at all. Like, and so when I was talking about writing a book, you know, she was all perked up and super excited. And then her question was, well, 
do you, are you planning to self publish or are you going to get a publisher? And I just was like, I looked at her, I was like, oh my God, I hope I don't have to self publish, but that's truly might be a possibility. <laughs> and, and then she was later on, she was, she was, she, she came up to me, she goes, oh my God, I didn't know, I didn't know what you did. You know, I didn't know that you've written books before. So it was really so sweet. I mean, it was a very sweet moment. <laughs> It was an embarrassing moment because I, I of course, knew who Christine Carlson was and Richard Carlson um, and Don't Sweat the Small Stuff as a series, but I, I didn't know that it was that Chris Carlson. <laughs> you know? So it was it was a lovely kind of embarrassing introduction. <laughs> but that's the best, isn't it, I think? Like for you, Chris, it's kind of the, the, the truest, most organic um, meeting. But And I should just give some context for anyone um, who... I haven't really framed who you two are and why 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 you're on the show. So Deborah um, was the editor of my book Energy Speaks, and we also collaborated on several projects for a few years. Um, and Deborah, you have a long history of being a developmental editor and an editor for many authors in the industry. Um, and before that, you were running spiritual bookstores, Whole Life Expo. So you've had this long career in the spiritual and healing field and for you Chris probably the don't sweat the small stuff series which has been a global phenomenon and it's 25 million copies in print and more languages than I can even remember right now was this was this phenomenon and I know you've written seven books in total um, so both of you had this history but it sounds like you met at this perfect convergence point for both of you where you were both looking to, to take the next step with with what you did in the world. Absolutely, I think um, I think that I was the first possibly to mention it first. Like, there's no way I would and um, I would do a program like this without Deborah because I just wouldn't have the skill set to do it on my own. And with the two of us um, coming together with all of um, just the whole background that I have of 20 years in publishing and 20 years that she has with different, you know, different ends of the spectrum. I mean, we just, we, it was like, I was like, oh my God, you want to do this too? I so want to do this. This would be so much fun, you know? And it's just proved to be like just the most fun thing I've ever done. <laughs> it really has. It's just the most fulfilling, fun thing I have ever done. I have to say that I'm always amazed at how life will have its way with us. Like that we do our visioning and our planning and we have our dreams and all of that counts. But, um, and it's not even a but, it's an and, you know, there's this miraculous way that we come into each other's lives. Like you, Lee, coming to me the way that you did through our uh, mutual friends, Ed and Monique, yeah. uh, who had gone, I think they had gone to a workshop of yours in, in, so you probably remember is it Amsterdam? Yeah, and I think they'd had they they both had some private sessions with me, and Ed had mentioned you to me at the yeah. end of a private session, or had emailed me about you. Yeah, yeah, and you know Ed is somebody who has always been so discerning and so and and very deeply experienced in his spiritual journey. And so when he told me about you and said, you know, Lee Harris is really special like just really the real deal um and by the way i think he may be looking for somebody to work with on his next book um you know i i couldn't have predicted that coming and and when i met you the first time when when i picked you up to um take you to a meeting that we had scheduled with what would become your publisher i you know, I remember so distinctly walking into the hotel room, in, well, not the room, but the hotel lobby in San Francisco and seeing you come off the elevator and you had on this blue cap and these big, beautiful blue eyes. And it was just like my soul brother had just walked off the elevator and um, you are one of the great loves of my life too. And and then, you know, similarly with Chris, I, I mean, I had known about the Don't Sweat series for so long, of course, because when um, that came out in 1997, I was a conference director with Whole Life. And I never could quite accomplish getting Richard Carlson, um, which I know Chris will talk about, but I could never quite get him uh, as one of our speakers somehow. And, and um, 
so to fast forward many years later to meet Chris and to discover this incredible similar, there's so many similarities between the two of you as far as people who are deeply tuned in, deeply guided by spirit, um, kind and present and just a total joy to work with. I, you know, I'm just the luckiest person. <laughs> well, I think you just described yourself, my dear. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> and it's funny what you, t you know, talking about like the loves that we have in each other's lives, because I was really thinking that this morning, and I've said that to you before, and we don't get to see each other very much anymore, because we had this really pivotal, like 18 months together before I, you know, met Stephen, we moved to Southern California, you went off to Berkeley and um, from, from Mill Valley. And I remember when you told me about Chris, it was kind of like when a love of your life is in another new relationship and you really like I I could feel that between you two. And I was like, oh, I'm, re I'm really happy because we couldn't be together in person quite as much anymore. But so so I'm curious, Chris, to ask you a little bit. So Don't Sweat the Small Stuff is a series that I was very aware of, but I, I never actually read the books, but I know they were this massive phenomenon. Um, what was that like for you? You know, how did it come about? And then what was the experience of being part of something that has left such an imprint um, on in our world? What, what's that been like? Well, you know, um, it happened at, you know, we always just used to say it was like a typical overnight success story because it took 10 years. <laughs> mm. And Richard had written, uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff was his 10th book. And, you know, it, it was a little bit like um, going from struggle, struggle, struggle um, to starting to make that climb. Like there was a point at which Wayne Dyer was starting to sort of pass a torch to Richard a bit and, and sort of um, open doorways for him. And, and then publishing was really starting to happen. He'd, he'd published a series of anthologies that you would probably love. Um, Handbook for the Heart, Handbook for the Soul healers on healing for the love of God, these very deep spiritual books. And then um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff was actually his personal 10th book. And, um, you know, I just, I, I remember this one very vivid memory. Richard used to just go to, um, it, this was prior to really when the internet was really up and running and he would go to his um, upstairs office and he would call the woman. He got a hold of this woman at USA Today and he would call the woman on Wednesday night to see where his book was on USA Today because he couldn't wait till Thursday morning to find out. And so um, it was, you know, it was such a breathtaking um, experience to go from, you know, being that up and comer for him to, to watching his book climb, climb, climb. And then when he finally was on Oprah, because he she'd, he'd been on Oprah before, but um, she brought him on. And he was already like um, on the USA Today top 10, you know, he was climbing the list. And then Oprah came to say hello to him in the green room. And um, she said, oh my God, Richard, I love this book so much. You've literally taught me how to be more present in my life. And, and I keep your book by my bedside. And Richard said, oh my God, Oprah, you have to say that on the air, that you have my book by your bedside. <laughs> And she, and she started laughing, you know, she was like, oh, Richard, you don't need me to do it. He goes, Oprah, say it, say it. And sure enough, you know, you could just see him on that segment. Um, he's, he's sitting back and he's big smile when she says, I love this book so much. I keep it by my bedside at night. And, you know, it, it, it just, that just kind of took the whole book exposure to a completely different level. I mean, it, it literally sat in the number one spot on the New York Times for like a hundred weeks. It was incredible. Wow. It was just an incredible run. And I just remember this one moment, Richard turning to me and saying, we, we, we have to remember this. Like we have to remember this because this is gonna happen like once in our lifetime to have this feeling. And, and it was, it, he was so, you know, just, just so touched and always at the heart level, just so touched that, that he got to um, play that role um, for a while in his life, you know? So it was, it was precious. Yeah. And your involvement in those books, did that come about quite organically or how did that happen? Yeah, 
well, you know, I mean, it, it's safe to say that I was probably very much Richard's muse on some level where, you know, we, we spent a lot of time um, having coffee in the morning, we'd meditate, we'd have coffee, and we would really strategize for other people about, you know, come up with uh, catchy phrase titles for short chapters. And um, he invited me to write the, the third book in the series, which was Don't Sweat the Small Stuff in Love with him. And I have to say, you know, he really wrote most of that book. I wrote about 10 chapters and I contributed, you know, in conversation with him, but it was really about getting my feet wet. And then after that book came out and we promoted it together and it was such a blast. If you and Stephen haven't written a book on relationships together, the energy of relationships (laughs) speaks well. No, I think that, um, you know, it's such a great exercise for a couple to write a book together because the communication and the clarity is just, it's so it's like, we laughed so much because of the things that would come up and what we would want to write about and share. And, um, and then the publisher then asked me to write, don't sweat the small stuff for women because they said, you know, wow, she can write and she can speak and she can promote. Um, would she write it? And then interestingly, I didn't really want to, <laughs> I thought it would kind of mess up my life to become an author at that point. <laughs> In what way? In what, what, what? Well, we had two small kids, um, two mm. daughters at home. And um, I was really, you know, I was the one that was home sweating yeah. the small stuff while Richard was always touring. And, you know, and I, I um, and, you know, honestly, it, it terrified me. It was like being on a national platform that, you know, after you, I mean, he would sell a million copies of his books as soon as they came out, you know. And so being on a national talk show platform, with him was one thing being on a national talk show platform as me, as his wife, you know, and I had that whole thing that most people have, which I'm sure some of your listeners have is that, you know, who am I to write a book? I mean, I, that's exactly how I felt. I was like, who am I to write this book? I have, I'm not, I'm not you, I'm not a PhD in psychology. And, and so that was kind of my first block to overcome was to um, really you know, Richard sat down and he thought I'd be so excited. And I really, my response was, wow, do I have to write this book? And he, and he basically said, well, I can think of about a million reasons why you might want to. <laughs> and then I said, I said, well, can, can, if I don't, can I, can I say no? And he goes, yeah, you can say no, but if you don't write it, some other woman's going to. And, and then we talked more. And the next day I woke up and kind of begrudgingly said, all right, I'll do it. You know, <laughs> That's great. And I'm curious because it's interesting hearing more about your journey makes so much sense about why Book Doulas is so successful because here you are and you've gone through so many of the steps, the thoughts, the fears that we go through. And then over on the right, we have Deborah, who is not only a masterful editor, but you've been a midwife to so many of us in the field. I mean, you know, you've worked with so many different people, but I I know that you also, Deborah, had a huge um, journey with Debbie Ford. And and that was one of your closest working relationships. It was very pivotal before she passed. And um, yeah, so you've seen it from the other side too, of supporting, holding space. And I'm curious, Deb, was that always in you? Because I see that in your personality and I know that of you as an editor, but did you always have that that part of you that can hold space and help others bring through what they're looking for? Um, yeah, I think the short answer is yes. Like I've always been somebody who, you know, loved to connect with people on a very intimate level of really listening and being with. Um, so that has always been a driving kind of force in my life. And then I actually wrote a blog about this for our book doula's blog this past week, a very pivotal moment in my being kind of a space for listening happened when I was working at Whole Life Expo. And I won't go into the whole story now, but long story short is that Wayne Dyer um, and his manager, Maya, was frantically trying to get a, a workshop description to us because she knew that we were on deadline for getting our programs guide printed. And she just called me one day and said, can, can Wayne call you? Because he has no idea what he wants to talk about. And we, we know you guys have to have this by tomorrow. So um, of course, yes, of course, have Wayne call me. And Wayne 
called and we spoke for maybe 10 minutes and I basically just asked him, you know, what is it that you're feeling really passionate about right now? So it was not like a really crafty question. It was just really wanting to know, like, and trusting. Like I knew that if he started talking, something meaningful would come out of it. And, and I asked him, I said, you know, even if it's something that you haven't been talking about publicly or haven't even been thinking about talking about publicly, what are you excited about? So I just started typing as he talked. And out of that came a little description um, for the program guide. But the bigger piece that came out of it was something that dawned on me over time, which is that there's this incredibly creative, exciting kind of collaborative thing that happens um, in a moment like that. And I, I, I realized that I was privileged to be having that conversation. And I, I've gotten to have those with you, Lee, which has been extraordinary. And then to fast forward to, to Chris, like um, we started to, when we started to work together, you know, I, we would actually go to the place where she is today up in Sea Ranch, her beautiful um, vacation home by the ocean. And I would have my like way too old laptop in my lap uh, at that time. I've upgraded since then. <laughs> and and Chris would be talking with me and just sharing things with me uh, and sharing stories with me. And so, you know, in, inevitably we were laughing and crying most of the time <laughs> because she was talking about, you know, Richard's passing. And, and I got to, to listen in on this lifelong or, you know, a 25 year love affair um, that was so beautiful to listen to and to listen about. Um, so, uh, you know, again, like for the sake of time, I'll just shorten the story by saying that, you know, listening into Chris's heart and mind and her wisdom um, was such a beautiful experience um, that, and our collaboration was so easy and so pleasurable and, and productive that we thought, okay, we have got to do something with this. We want to help other people to have the kind of experience that, that we're having now. Yeah. And, and before we kind of delve in a little bit to, you know, the Book Doula program, but, but more importantly, like what you two are observing, seeing, helping people overcome with becoming authors. I'm curious, Chris, just to touch on the fact that you wrote the book about Richard's passing and, and how I think, I think grief and, and, and the loss of people that we love is less taboo these days to talk about, but I think it's one of the hungriest conversations we all have. Like, we all want to know about it. We all want to talk about it, perhaps more than we've been able to and allowed to. So first of all, I commend you for wanting to write that book. And I'm, I'm curious, how was that for you? Like, did you know early on that you, that you wanted to write that book in the process? Or did you have to get to a place of being willing and ready to, to, to be that vulnerable about it? Well, that's a great question, Lee. And I actually wrote two books on my um, on my grief. One was called Heartbroken Open, a memoir through loss to self-discovery. And that was taken really from the early parts of my journey um, in loss. One of the things that I had to really do early on to fill up my early morning time with Richard, I, I started to write, you know, because that felt like the one thing I could do that that connected us. And so I, um, I started to journal and write and, and let kind of a stream of consciousness, which I believed was him coming through me at that time. And, and it, it, it helped me to just step forward on my journey of grief because I was just so, I mean, I was really just so heart shattered, you know, just so broken from the whole experience and the trauma of it too. So, um, so that was, you know, I, it was interesting because there was one time when I was in grief and it was, it was so painful for me. And, you know, I was only 43 years old, so I was very young and, and I really felt in those moments that where grief was so, it was, it was, my heart was hurting so bad. I really felt like I could die. And I really was laying on the floor and I was just shaking and screaming and I remember coming out of that and I remember thinking like, how does the normal person ever do this? Because I had every tool in my tool belt, every workshop, every, every healing modality I had done, 
And I was struggling to survive it. And I thought, I just start, I started to witness what grief was and I started to journal about it. And so then when it came time, you know, I, I just really wanted to share that because I wanted, first of all, at, when I was a widow, I, I, I didn't know any other widows at my age, you know? And so I wanted, I wanted younger widows to have um, some sort of path that they could follow that would help them and be a companion to them because I didn't have that. And and I knew that my process worked for me. And it wasn't until I met this woman, Mary, and she followed everything in my book that I actually knew it worked for everyone else. <laughs> you know? I was like, oh, good, this works. You know, but but anyways, it, 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 I didn't ever question because I think I, I knew that this was one of the reasons why I did come to the earth. And I knew that Richard's death wasn't an accident in my, in my experience of my life. From that point forward, I had to treat it um, that this, this, we had a blessed marriage and a blessed life and that this was somehow going to be a blessing um, at some point too. And, and it came through my writing and, and through my work. And then the next book was really my, how to over 10 years, it was distilled a, a 10 years of speaking and, you know, writing blogs and, and working with people in grief groups and, and all sorts of stuff. I decided that that was calling to me as kind of my, not my departure from the grief place, but in a way, because I, um, the, the conversation about grief is not one I'll ever leave, but it's not one I want to be in. Like I'm so healed. And so while I, I'm able to talk about it and relate to it and help others, it's I wanted to start to move toward a conversation that was more of a bridge from what I had been writing about to Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, which was my previous life. If that makes sense. Totally, completely. And it's interesting. It reminds me that one of the things you know, I started channeling over 20 years ago. And one of the things that the Z's explained to me early on is they said that when you're in grief, you're in death energy. You know, they said the energy of death is actually a, a realm that you have entered into. And that's why long-term grief um, that, 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 we can't, that we can't move or that we can't transmute or that we don't get the support that we need through can be so debilitating to people because it, it means that the, the ability to connect to life is very, very small. So it's funny, that just comes to mind as I, as I hear you talk about that, that first book and that first stage that you were going through. Um, and I'm curious how, how it was for your girls, because how old were they when you lost Richard? They were 14 and 17. So they were, um, one was entering just in her first year of high school. And then the, uh, my oldest daughter, Jazz, was leaving high school. And, and Richard, I mean, right before he died, he had ad addressed all of the, by hand, all of the um, college application um, envelopes, you know, and he was helping her get everything, you know, ready for her college applications to be finally sent in. It was, it was, uh, it was a horrible, horrible time. And, and my girls are so strong and they are just, they are such amazing young women. And, you know, they, it, it was horrible. You know, it, it's a horrific thing that happens to all families when they lose a parent, you know, at that time in life or any time. I mean, there's no great time to lose anyone we love, but when it happens so early and so unexpected like that, it was it was hard. It was really hard. It was hard on them. And, and yet they, they, they're just amazing young women. Yeah. Yeah. And Deb, when you and Chris came together, so you had, you were at this workshop called, um, why we came to earth with, with yeah. Rich and Yvonne, which is just brilliant. And, and Justin, um, did you two, how long did it take you to conceive of, of what it was that you two were going to do? And because I know that creative journeys, creative endeavors, they percolate and then you build a little bit. And I know that you guys are already thinking of how you can expand. Now you've, you've kind of put the first few stages of the book doula program out there. But I'm curious what the process was like for you two. What was the doula process like for you two in birthing the birthing program? Well, if I could just tout Deborah's horn for a moment, because honestly, like, like, I don't think there is anybody that could be described as a doula better than Deborah. I mean, she right. is, you know, the, the kind of listening that she's describing is, it's just amazing. And I know you've probably had that experience with her, Lee, where 
and, and I've talked to other people that I've worked with her too, where there's this moment where you think that you're the most brilliant person alive because Deborah's reflecting oh, back yes. to you, you know, do you Completely. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Deborah, <laughs> it, Deborah is, is one of the purest hearted celebrants I've ever known, like she, truly. And you, you set the bar really high, Deb. Yeah, and she, I'll never forget actually at Justin and Pascal's wedding, um, Justin's mom said something about you that I thought was so true. She was, she was sat in the corner and we were with her for a moment and someone asked her a question about, was she okay? Did she need anything? And her response was, Deborah's here. And whenever Deborah's here, I always know everything's okay. And I thought that that's you, you know, that's the energy that you bring to your relationships and to those of us that love you. And yeah, so yeah, you are the doula incarnate and, and working with you as an editor, and, and I remember when we, were, when we were doing that work, you were also indirectly and directly putting the call out there for what's next for me, because you'd had this long career that had, had many different forms, but you were also ready for the next thing. And then when a year or so later, you told me about what you two were doing, I was like, oh, that's perfect. Well, I, I'm reminded right now of um, having listened to your um, your program with Emmanuel Dogger, that oh, yeah. Is, yeah. Um, and how he was commenting on how it was to receive the the words of praise and love. So it's it's a lot to take in from the two of yeah. you, and I'm doing it though. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well done. It's <laughs> never it's never easy. Yeah. I think you know Deborah also is just a brilliant teacher. You know she she just, she is such a um, clear communicator. And I think that's one of the things I love most about her is I, I've never met somebody who com communicates so amazingly as, as Deborah Evans. I mean, she just, she's so crystal clear. And I think um, that energy, it, it comes from a very well-tuned ear and a very well-tuned practice of really deeply listening and you know, we all know that the greatest gift in the entire world is to be heard. I mean, <laughs> yeah. and Deborah gives you that gift every time she's in your presence and she's, you know, there. And, and I mean, she hears things, you know, I'm sure she's done this with you too, Lee. She hears things, you say something, she's like, oh my God, that was so amazing. And you're like, what, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but even in life, there were things that I remember, like I remember very specifically when I was going on a date with somebody that really wasn't suitable for me. And at the same time, Stephen had just approached me and Deborah like turned my head back towards Stephen when I was kind of going down the road of the person who wasn't so suitable because we were we were kind of buddying each other on our on our dating lives when we weren't working on a book. It was kind of like a an all round thing. So your ability to listen and see and perceive was was brilliant in in all ways. But anyway, Deb, I know I know you're going to explode with all of these compliments. Um, you know, I, I often have thought, and I've said this to you before, Lee, but I've often felt like being around you is like being with a um, like a crystal generator. Like my own intuition was so clearly amped up. And, and I think it was in spending more time with you, especially during that 18 months you're talking about, where, again, it was, it was like you helped me to see something that I then could see more clearly when I was working with you, Chris, which is that my intuition, I think, uh, you know, shows up in that dynamic of working with the teacher authors that I've been so fortunate to work with, where... Uh, but it's also not, you know, it, it's not rocket science either. Like you guys would just say things and, 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 you know, put out, exude a certain energy, a clarity, um, a divine kind of download, all kinds of things, all kinds of signals that you put out, both of you and, and the other authors that I worked with differently, but in their own way. And so it's like, it's such a metaphysical experience really. And I don't think I've ever said it like that before, but, um, for me, the the yeah, the act of working as an editor is it yeah, it has the intellectual logical sides of it. Um, but thank God that's not the totality of it because it's so juicy and alive. And and to get back to your question about kind of the trajectory of things, like I'll, I'll say that when Chris and I came together and had the aha moment, um, and in fact, at the workshop, the end of the workshop, Chris said to me, you know. I think it would be good for us to get together to talk about my book because you may be the perfect editor for me, right? 
And so we scheduled a meeting the next day. I think it was a Monday after the workshop. And so I came to Chris's house kind of prepared to really go through a lot of Q&A. Like she's going to she's going to drill me, of course. I want to know. Um she's going to want to be really really sure. And she's going to probably want to really talk things through, but you know, it was so casual. It was so it was so easy and it was so much fun. And she already, she just, I think, Chris, you, I think you knew really, really quickly. And it speaks to your intuition, your level of following your own deep knowing guidance. And um, so it was a really fast process. And she had already really dialed this book in. Like she knew exactly the trajectory that the book was going to take. Um, she already had a publishing contract and she had an outline and she said very graciously to me, if you see anything about the way this book is, is, is playing out that should be changed, please let me know. But as it turns out, she had it so well dialed in. And so we just went about the work of, of her sending me pages to edit and getting together and talking and having those conversations turn into more written material and just doing kind of the the quilt work of bringing it together. Um, and so, you know, again, like out of that process, like I, Chris, was it 2017, October of 2017 that your book was due? Ooh, gosh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, about, yeah, three years ago. Yeah, because yeah. we got it done on time, which was a blessing and that's not always easy to do. <laughs> and, um, and then it was very soon after that, that we started really talking in earnest about joining forces. You know, Chris has her own company, her own other brand of Chris Car Christine Carlson um, retreats and all that. And, and so she needed to see how to fit book doulas in to everything else that she was already working on and already in, already in the process of building. And, um, but anyway, I mean, the, the, the birth of book doulas has been just one of the great joys of my life. And I don't want to like take all the airwaves here, but I'll just say that I think after um, a, a lifetime of reading and attending workshops and, you know, doing all kinds of healing modalities and being trained as a coach by Debbie Ford and the Ford Institute for Integrative Coaching, um, as well as working with Debbie on four of her books and, and really, really going deep with her as she as my mentor and my friend. And um, it just, it, it's like what's happening with book doulas is such a, an integration of, of a lifetime of really wanting to, to be in this transformational conversation. And it just happens that one of the ways that that, that that works for me is through the written word. Um, and, you know, so I, yeah, I, I, I is that clear? <laughs> I feel like I'm saying a lot of things. No, no, it, it's all, it's all great. Um, it's very clear. And, 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 it, and it's interesting because, you know, I think we all know from working in this field and listening in this field, you meet so many people who are like, I think I've got a book inside me especially in the personal development transformational field. You know, I think a lot, a lot of those of us who have been students of this work, many then feel they have something to contribute. And yet there are so many roadblocks. You know, we touched on the imposter syndrome, like who am I? Which I think is 101 for any creator any, of anything. And then, you know, you talk to other people and they're like, yeah, I thought that too. And here I am with this thing that's been going 10 years or always a big hit or you, you start to suddenly see that whatever we think in our minds should not be a barrier, but it might be there as you step forward. So I think you two holding the space and the container for all of these wannabe authors that you have been in the last couple of years, and I know you're expanding in 2021 to not only have the 10-week program, which is what you've been running successfully for the last couple of years, but also a monthly writing boot camp, which I think is brilliant because I think more and more people want the support and the help. So I'm curious, what do you walk us through? What are kind of some of the classics that hold us back as wannabe authors? Like, what do you hear the most? Are there, are there certain fears or certain ideas that, that are, are often in the way of someone beginning or completing their book? 
Yeah, so when, one of the things that we hear a lot in our program, because our program is um, called the Book Incubator, so that somebody can really come in and really incubate as an author. And so we try to give them every single tool that we have um, and, and that, you know, you've been a guest speaker. We have many guest speakers that come um, that will help them understand the entrepreneur, the entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial pathway that they're getting on as an author. And also um, what it means to, um, you know, everyone has a book in them, but then they have to know how to build their platform, for example. And one of the big stumbling blocks for a lot of people is they don't want to be on social media. You know, they don't want to be that vulnerable or, you know, and so we do a lot of work um, on how to build your platform from a place of authenticity and, and how to feel really good about building that relationship. We kind of bring it back to your building a relationship with your potential readers and, and so you don't have to be somebody you're not. You don't have to look cooler than you are or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you can just be who you are and let your tribe, let the people find you based on the qualities that you have that you bring from the inside out. And so that's been a really big, um, a really big piece of our work with these groups that come into our book incubator. Yeah. And um, also, Lee, you, you, brought up the the perfect term the roadblocks because you know there are so as, as you're both saying there are just a lot of roadblocks that can pop up and oftentimes they are you know they're emotionally oriented and you know the fear of who am I to write this or this has already been written or um, if I do write this, um, you know, my husband will divorce me or <laughs> my family will disown me or everybody's going to know that I'm, you know, that I'm a new age freak or, you know, <laughs> there's just so many um, internal obstacles. And, and then there's the flip side of that too, which is, I think, sometimes even harder to kind of come face to face with, which is not surprisingly though, it's it's that fear of really being seen yeah. and really having our light be seen. And it's interesting, like for me, because I grew up very, you know, when I was a kid, I was very shy. And although I had lots to say and lots that I wanted to say, I was mortified to actually say it in the, where anybody was actually paying any attention to me. Um, and, you know, Interestingly, I would go right toward that like a moth to a, a flame. Uh, like I, I just love books and I love to hear speakers and teachers uh, who are really doing that. And, and so when people bring, you know, I've confronted a lot of my own fears, my own internal obstacles as Chris has as well, although I don't think Chris has as many <laughs> as I do. I've had them, I've, I've definitely had them. I wouldn't say that, maybe not now, but I've definitely had them, so. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it, it, it's just such a joy to actually help people to, to talk about those things, name them, um, move through them. And that's one of the reasons why having something like the incubator or even our monthly boot camp that we, we've just started up, whatever it is, like to have a container where people are holding you. And in this case, it's Chris and me, as well as the whole community of writers that come together. Um, and, you know, again, so many people, Lee, have come to us through your incredible community. And so we have this just stunningly awake, aware, loving, kind community where people can face these obstacles and, and push them aside and just do the work and get the clarity and set their intentions and start writing. And so like the boot camps, for example, it's a great day just to come and write and then come back, we, we do two Zoom calls. We do a morning Zoom call for an hour where we get to talk and, and do a lot of intention setting. Um, and then we break for a four hour period where people create their own solo work day. Um, we give them some ideas and tips for how they might wanna utilize that time and how many breaks they might, might wanna take. But then we come back for people who wanna read what they've been working on, they can, have all of us bearing witness to what they're saying and what they want to say. And they can receive feedback or they can say, you know what, I just want to be heard. I just want to read this and I don't want any feedback. That's <laughs> um, great. Yeah. Well, I, I love how 
Well, a couple of things. It's it's funny. One of the things I've 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 become aware of now, or I don't think I was aware of this 15, 20 years ago, is that the act of us creating something is never just about the thing itself. So even if you're really focused on, oh my God, I've got to get this book done, or I've got to, you know, create my recipe book, or whatever it is that that drives you, it, it what I'm really clear about now and have gone through this myself is that inner transformational journey you will go through as you surrender your body, your mind, your soul to birth this thing is profound. And, and sure, it's great when your finished product is, is having the results that maybe you wanted. You know, it's changing people's lives or it's done well in the way that that matters to you. But, but actually, you are forever changed like from, from creating that thing. And I think that's kind of the best kept secret about creating you don't do it to try and make the end product a certain thing you do it to really surrender to the journey and the transformation you're going to go through that is so brilliant and something that we've really talked so much about um you know i i mean i've definitely experienced that every book that i've ever written and it's as if your own book that you write elevates you you know like <laughs> because it is transformational and you know, we talk about like just how um, messy it can be, you know, to be in that. And, and that's why I think being in a group too is very supportive. And there's something about the energy is when it's tandem like that, people are just on fire. It's like the create, the creative sparks are all just, they're all just flying around. Our last group was just so chatty from the, from day one, like they were just on the chat and they were just like, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> Yeah. And it's just, it's super fun. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's an amazing, another thing we found in our um, program is that some people, they have so many book ideas that they don't know how to narrow it down to the one that they really want to write. That's one thing. So the, the program provides a lot of clarity and um, I don't know, it's just, we've just had so much um, just amazing feedback from that, that program. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. I would love to just piggyback on what, Chris just said about um, getting the clarity, Lee, because, and I think you can relate to this too, because you're a creative who has a lot of ideas and you do, you do put a lot out there. And I'm imagining from what I know of you that for as much as you put out there in the world through your albums and your audios and your courses, et cetera, and then the book, um, and then the two books that came before the one that I worked on with you, um, for all that you put out, there's there's so much more that you haven't yet put out mm. into the world and that you're going to put out into the world. And um, what Chris and I have really started to zone in on with each other is how doing our program is, it, it can really take a lot of the pain out of the process for people because you know we can all spend inordinate amounts of time kind of spinning our wheels internally. And, you know, I think about, there are probably just so countless people who do that privately. And then there are those of us who do it kind of in, in kind of community where we're talking to each other about it. Um, but, you know, we, we've had a few, I think what I want to do is illustrate the point by, I'm thinking about a woman who came to us who already had written her entire manuscript, but she had decided to do the program with us. And, she wanted to really utilize it mostly for platform building. Um, and then it came time to really focus more on the book. And she realized that there were a lot of changes that she wanted and needed to make to her manuscript. And, you know, I'm sure there are lots of important lessons in that for her that should never be taken away. But the, the point is that I think that a lot of people can save a lot of time and, and energy and kind of frustration and some heartache to do a program like ours or like, you know, if anybody else is doing something like this too, where you find the people who can really be you in your listening with you and really help you to get super clear. What kind of book is this? What, what's the category? Is it a self-help book? Is it a memoir? Is it a teaching memoir? Um, what is the form that it's supposed to take? And, and how do I want to articulate what I know? How do I want to bring my stories into it? And, in getting that kind of clarity, then the writing can happen in a really flowing way. But without getting clear about some of these really basic aspects of a book, 
you know, again, a lot of the, the wheel spinning can happen or somebody might end up writing an entire manuscript and get feedback from somebody in the publishing industry that it's not ready, that it has to be rewritten. And so we we're really excited about saving people some time <laughs> and some frustration and, and having, you know, kind of getting as much as possible to get the start that will really serve their whole writing process. Well, I love to that what you've both just spoken to is the power of the group. And if we go back about 20 minutes in this conversation, when Chris and I were loving big on you and, and talking about our love and our gratitude for you, what really the three of us were doing, I think, was we were talking about the importance of other people for all of us. It's like the importance of our relationships and those people that are there to support us or hold space for us or we for them and and what we all learn when we're in those relationships. So yeah. while I know that there might be some people who might go, no, no, a one-on-one -on -one writing coach is what I need and, and that might be their truth. When we're talking about a book that you want to share with the world, you're talking about having a, a very um, global, potentially global conversation through this very intimate, like private, um, you know, quite torturous process for a lot of people. I mean, I know lots of really talented writers who are like, I can't stand writing. I have to do it, but I hate the process of doing it. And I hear that so much. And um, I think what's lovely about what, what you guys are offering is for those who want that community and who want that community feedback and community connection, they will hear one of the voices in their head when Julie says what's going on for her or when John says what's going on for him and, and you get to actually see all the different aspects of your personality that are maybe in the way of this book coming out or are maybe meant to come along and be a guiding writer for a certain chapter. So I think that's beautiful. It really is, it's, it's pretty profound. I mean, it's, it's amazing that on Zoom, people make all those intimate connections too. It always cracks me up. Zoom is pretty effective. I'm, I mean, we've run retreats on Zoom and I'm shocked that you have a lot of the same result as if you are in person. Yeah, have you found that too, Lee? With Because so much of what you had done in person with people has been happening online and how has that been for you? Yeah, I, that, that really shocked me a few years ago when we started doing um, our online courses. I think, I think we can all agree that, you know, there's nothing quite like in person for yeah. one aspect. For sure. But I also think it's important, especially I think when you're dealing with transformational work that has some level of existence in the psychic realms, the creative realms, there is something about the energy of the online connection that's extraordinary, especially when you see the scale of people who come together, suddenly people can affordably come together and from very far flung parts of the world where to actually get all of those people in one room together is, is quite logistically, economically, time-wise hard, you know? So I, I love that about the online experience. Yeah, and to go to what you were saying about the intimacy factor, when you came and, and did your um, guest speaker talk with our incubator group last year, mm. not last year, it was this year, but it was the springtime. Was it really? Oh my yeah. God. It, doesn't everything pre like March of this year feel like a, a, a lifetime ago? It does. Crazy. <laughs> Truly. And, and, you know, one of, I, I knew that with you being there with us, that it would, it would be a rich, deep, conversation that could go any which way. Um, but we had ostensibly said that you were going to be coming on to talk about how to build a YouTube channel and how to build um, a, a community, an online community that that is responsive and connected. And, and really, that's the conversation that you had with everybody was about the connectivity factor. And, mm. and, and I, I love that about you. And it's so true with you too, Chris, like that there, at the, you know, there's a lot that gets done. You're both super productive. You've got, you're putting out a lot of content um, individually as, as authors and teachers. And at, at the heart of it, it's about an intimate connection. And, um, and that, you know, if, if I had to kind of boil it all down to like in terms of helping people to get their books written, we really put 
in, in our own ways, because Chris's way of talking about it and teaching it is different, a little bit different than mine. But at the heart of it, it's like, it's all about helping people to really not hypothetically and not so much as, as like a visualization activity, but as something real and felt to know that there's a reader on the other side of the page and that to really, even if the book is in its infancy and it's far from being published in whatever way they're gonna do that, like to actually write to someone and for someone um, and, and let that be as real as it is, like that changes everything about how the words start coming out, wouldn't you both say? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the probably the number one easiest thing to forget for a new, um, maybe anyone actually, if you don't keep it in mind, but for especially new writers, we find that it's something that we have to teach them to turn toward their reader in their manuscript so that their reader feels very much included in the conversation. And it's it's powerful, you know, it's very powerful when you keep that in mind. Um, I, I don't know about you, Lee, but I both write for myself, for my own healing, but I also, I also write knowing and knowing that that is going to transpire into a very intimate conversation with my reader. Mm, mm. Well, it's funny, my probably main medium is, is speaking and video and, and audio more, more so than writing really, but, but I'm very aware of the things moving through my orbit, my world, that at some point are going to be something that I can frame that hopefully is useful for other people. Absolutely. And what you said about, you know, knowing there is a reader on the other side, I think that's really important. Whenever, when in the past I've taught people about working on camera, you know, one of the things that I, I recognize is if you are using a video camera as your tool of communication for someone else or a microphone, don't think about the microphone or the camera. See the person or feel the person who's hearing it. That's just the device that's between you and the listener. And, and I've noticed the huge shift when people just make that mind shift around, oh, it's not a foreign device that is scaring me. I, this is just, it's like picking up a telephone and speaking to somebody. Um, it's the same thing. So I think, I think that's so important, having, having to some degree your audience or your listener or your person you're trying to connect with in mind as well as bringing through what, what you want to bring through. Yeah, and then on another level too, I think having, you know, we always talk a lot about having the feelings of that person in mind too, you know, and really kind of knowing that your work is really meant to promote the insight for them, you know, you're, you're inspiring them like any healer would. It's not the healer healing the person, it's the person doing the work and then turning inward to find the answer. And so that's like always at the core of, of what we teach, especially with our transformational authors and writers is that you, you know, you have to know, like you have to know what you want them to feel when they're reading this, because that has everything to do with the kind of insight that they're going to have as they, um, as they read maybe your story that you've written. Mm, so true. So true. And, and one thing to just touch on before we wrap our conversation up, and, it, and it's come up a couple of times as we've been talking, but I think one of the thing that I know, one of the things I know about both of you um, in different ways is you have reverence for books and the magic maps that they are, because that's what books really are to me. They're these magical maps to yourself, to the world, to a new way of being. And, and I know that you both hold them really, really powerfully and lightly and beautifully in that way. So I love that this is something that you're doing, especially now, because I know speaking to many people over the last few years, people really, I think, have a even more of a reverence for books these days, especially as stuff has gone so digital. I'm, I'm still a person who buys a book. I, I, enough, enough with the screen, you know, I want the book. And, yeah. I, and I, think, I think that the reverence for books and the importance of books and passing on knowledge and experience through books has never been higher in a way at this time in history. It's very needed. So I'm really glad that you guys are doing what you're doing out there to help promote and encourage and guide other people to do that work in the world. 
It's an honor and a privilege and a pleasure. And, and again, I, I'd never be doing this work without Deborah Evans. I'm pretty sure she could probably do it without me though, but don't get that idea, please. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You know, it's Chris, I mean, that's so funny because Chris uh, has brought such, she's been such a huge yes to me. She came into my life with her own big, beautiful platform and having worked, you know, I want to say worked hard, but I, as I say that, I want to just um, kind of underscore that with how Chris is somebody who really has exemplified for me that you can work with integrity and you can get a lot done without actually killing yourself over it. <laughs> and and so that energy is a part of what we're creating with with Book Doulas and what I've been learning from her. Um, but yeah, I I well yeah, two thoughts. One is that. I wouldn't be doing this without Chris. It would be no fun. And, you know, she, her, Chris, your welcoming me into your life and into your work world has just been totally transformational, which goes back to something that you were saying earlier, Lee, about how writing a book is a transformational experience and working with people on writing books is a transformational experience. And I think one quick thing I want to say kind of in relationship to what you were saying, Lee, about there never having been a more potent, powerful time to write. Um, Yeah, I think I agree. I think for people to just let go of the idea that it's already been said or there are already so many books out there, that doesn't really matter. That truly doesn't matter. And would one of the things that comes into my awareness when people say that is like, what if some, what if the Beatles had decided to just stay a bar band? You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, it's like, we just, we need each other to come out of the closet, so to speak, and, and write what there is to be written and say what there is to be said. And, um, and, and it's such an interesting time because I think back when I was like working with whole life expo, for example, in the nineties, that was a time when, I think self-help and personal development and spiritual growth teachers had a little more of a guru kind of energy. Mm. And it's not like that so much now. Now it's really, you know, peers speaking to peers, right? And I see that in what you do, Lee, that you, you know, and I said this to Chris recently, like I watch you on video and I think, God, you know, you sit firmly in the seat of your own experience and in your own authority as Lee Harris. And you always talk to people as your peer, as your friend, as somebody who is a fellow brother or sister on the journey. And and that's really where we're coming from too. I mean, Chris has been a New York Times bestseller and yet she's always and consistently like present with people as a peer. Mm -hmm. And for me as well, we we just want people to, help people bring out, you know, the, the most kind of the richest, deepest, highest quality books that they can. Mm. So, so well said. And I think that that unity consciousness that you just described, thankfully, is, is the world that we're in now um, and the world that we're moving into. And without that, you know, we're, we're not really anything. I mean, it's not that we don't have our own divine soul and, but, you know, I, I can like, like we've said all through this conversation, we all inform each other. And I love that you said, what if the Beatles hadn't done it? Because I remember years and years ago, catching my own brain going, oh, why would I do this? Because they're already doing it and they're doing it so well. And they've got gazillions of followers. And it was just me talking myself out of doing something that, you know, actually when I thought about it, I was like, well, thank God Tori Amos said yes to fight, to put her music out there. Because she's been one of my music healers. And thank God all the people who have, in some way influenced my life were able to overcome their thing enough to put their thing out there that I have then been helped by. So I know that that's what you're doing with the next generation of authors. And the one thing we haven't addressed just before we go, I think this is a fascinating time with writing too, because of the internet. So you might write a book, but that book might become blog posts or sections of that book can, can now be shared in, in such a wide way. So I know that what you guys are guiding people with affects all of those areas. And before we go, you, you can, your work can be found together at bookdoulas.com and we will put the link underneath. And then your individual websites are christinecarlson.com 
and DebraEvansConsulting.com. Again, the links will be underneath. But you have the 10-week book inc incubator program, the monthly, um, the monthly writing boot camp, and you also have something coming out later in 2021 that you mentioned to me before we started, the Mindful Editor course. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's in development right now. And it's a course that uh, will probably be a digital course, maybe with some live elements, but it's really going to be for people who they, they may already be an editor who is already working with authors and want to kind of deepen their process and, and um, bring some of the more transformational aspects into their work. Um, or it could be somebody that has writing and editing chops that is not doing it professionally, who may want to, who may want to start their own entrepreneurial kind of enterprise as a freelance editor. Um, and, but we don't want to leave anybody out either because the, the big thing is too that everybody at some point has to edit their own work at some mm. point. Even if you're working with an editor, you want to have some of your own editing kind of skills to refine your work. So we're really excited about that. And, and I'll just say that the, the quality of listening that we were talking about earlier and in various ways throughout this whole conversation are very much a part of that uh, program. So we're super excited about that. And, and I also want to say that it's not on our website yet, but it will be in the future. And that is that the book incubators have been going so well um, and they're so educational. And out of that, we've developed another program called Momentum where we take a small group of people from each incubator and we work very closely with them. We roll up our sleeves together and we work with them like literally working on editing their initial chapters and getting them really set on their way. And we haven't been, we haven't published the page on our website for that yet because we're needing to really keep it, you know, close to the vest right now because it's just Chris and me, which is another reason why we want to create the, the Mindful Editor course because we want to grow a big field of book doulas um, who can help people to really get the work done. Um, so the Momentum program is something that will also, you know, be uh, more visible in the coming year. I love it. So in 2021, you two are going to go forth and multiply. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and I should just say that I know that you have a contact form at the website, but if, if any of these programs that are upcoming um, are piquing anybody's interest, you can um, put your email address into the website and go into your um, subscriber list to be notified when any of these are available. So as usual, we'll put all the links in the show notes. Ah, Deborah and Chris, it has been lovely. Thank you. Thank you for what you do in the world. Thank you for impacting the world. Thank you for impacting my world. And yeah, just so much love to you both with all that you're doing. And Chris, one day I'm going to meet you in person. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. We always talk about what a wonderful human Lee Harris is. That's what we say. And we're like, Lee Harris, we love Lee Harris. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thank you. And I, I feel the same way about you guys and what you're doing. And yeah. Yeah, just big, thank big you. love with all of your projects. And thank you, Deb. Thank you so much, Lee. It's been a joy to be here with the two of you. And I love watching your growth and your expansion too. So um, I, in fact, I listened to like two of your shows in the past couple of days. So yay. Oh, <laughs> yay, yay. Well, here's to, the, here's to the fun of creating stuff and the journeys that it takes all of us on. I think that's kind of the most fun part of it, just the yeah, getting to play and create create things that 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 hopefully will help contribute to the world and other people's worlds and lives and what they do. We're all just part of the same beehive, right? So absolutely. Thank you guys. Lots of love. And um yeah, we'll put all the links for Deborah and Chris in the show notes. So please go check out their website, bookdoulas.com and enjoy. Thank you. We have just finished Rebirth 2021, my annual flagship program, and this year was bigger than ever. We actually decided to offer all of the teaching live this year, but as ever, replays are available. So usually we close booking at the end of January, but this year, given the potency and the power of the event, 
and also because we're aware many of you are looking to up-level the way that you create your life, the things that you're creating, we've decided to leave registration open for a little longer. I dubbed Rebirth this year the Metaphysical Creators Summit because the themes were really all focused on how to bring into being what it is you might like next. And as well as modules that I teach, including channeling from my guides disease, I brought my whole team with me. So there are support materials in the form of videos or meditations from several of my team members, Marty, Wendy, Stephen Washington also brings his wonderful Qigong and it's Qigong that's designed for complete beginners. In fact, most of the practice was done from a chair so anyone can join in, but it was a wonderful grounding class that helps you activate your creative body, your creator's frequency. So as well as all of the supplemental worksheets, questions and writing prompts that I've offered for each class so that you can really take a deep dive we kick the whole thing off with a sound healing channeled recording and original song from myself and Davor Bozik, which is available as soon as you start, as is all the material. So please enjoy Rebirth 2021. You can find it at rebirth2021.com or at my website, Lee Harris Energy. Just follow the links below the video and we hope you enjoy. going back to our original life force, we're saying, hey, life force, you remember like what I came here with? You remember when I was like full, but I was much smaller in body? I wanna start bringing that back through. So life force goes, oh, okay, great. Well, good, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll need you to just clear this when you were six. Yeah, we just need to look at this because that's where things got really jammed up. And I was trying to send you quite a lot of life force then, but oh no. What we are saying is there is something in the high frequency of the subject, the gathering of this group, and why you have all come together for this rebirth experience at this time, this year. You have come to experience permission, trust, and higher learning around how to be more high frequency more of the time. You don't have to go off to a workshop and heal yourself so that you can become a creator. Become a creator and you will heal yourself. 